you are watching newsclick.in we are talking today about the situation in the united states of america and if you hadn't already seen that video there was 16 year old american tennis player koko goff whose message was is deeply personal but also one that seems to resonate with an entire section of society in the united states of america uh from the newspapers and the coverage of the protests that have broken out across that country over the past few days after the killing of george floyd we can tell that discrimination against minorities racism uh hundreds of years after or more than 100 years after the emancipation proclamation is still a very real thing uh that the black community and as well as hispanics and other minorities including uh, the l- large chunk of indian americans face in that country on almost daily basis uh we're talking with bebo ragnandan and lesley xavier of newslick sports today uh putting a little bit of context on this entire story of course getting an update on all the news that is coming out of uh, the us as well as how the international media is reporting the developments uh, we'll be looking at it from the perspective of of course athletes who are coming out because a disproportionate percentage of elite athletes belong to minority communities and this is true for the us as much as it's true for india as well so we'll be bringing some of these things into context and having a conversation around them and around minority rights around racism some of these issues uh, i'll come to you weber first just for a quick update on what's been happening over over it's been uh, night in india what's been happening overnight uh, what are the papers saying and and other news outlets saying so let's pick that off so actually we was we were supposed to record this a few hours back and at that point of time we had we were going to talk about just a few athletes young athletes in the bundesliga as well as neomi osaka and koko goff from in the wta who had supported who had sent out messages in support of george floyd and condemning police action against minority groups in the us since then in just this little in the time that we were asleep a lot has changed now i go through my instagram feed and every athlete i follow has put up a black square on instagram which is now seems to be the message standing up against racism and uh, liverpool last evening in a training session all their players and staff formed a circle around the center circle and they took a knee uh, floyd mayweather a man who is famously known for not saying much has come out and said he's going to cover the funeral costs for George Floyd. Uh in the news surrounding George Floyd's murder, it has now been classified as a homicide. Medical investigators have classified the death as being caused because of the kneeling but the knee on his neck. And the US president has uh, tear gassed protesters outside the White House so that he can go to church. Uh, so several several questions coming out of uh, the update that Weber gave us, Leslie. Uh, among them, of course, the most significant one, uh, perhaps in the context of this conversation, is why it's taken so long for non-black athletes or uh, athletes in general, perhaps, to come out and support. their i don't know compatriots their colleagues their counterparts their competitors or however you wish to describe them uh, despite the, the 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 sports arena being a place where people across uh, race uh, religion nationality ethnicity in india caste to some extent uh, come together right so there is a sense of solidarity within the community and yet when at times like this when solidarity is what is perhaps most needed you also find that that's when it's the most lacking uh so just contextualize this for us uh, in the indian sort of sphere as and uh, what what is the sort of reaction that we're getting out of indian athletes are uh, you know are people coming out and talking about it 
and are they also talking about things that happen within our own system within our little uh, sphere so it's a, i mean world is an open play playground that way if you uh, earlier viber was also mentioning about social media and how things things catch fire there so uh, our athletes regardless of whether they react to this or stand up in support of solidarity of uh, solidarity to the people who are fighting against racism in the us uh, it would come across as uh, something very uh, opportunistic and frivolous in the indian context because our sports stars cricketers athletes across uh, any sport you take footballers everybody remains silent when things happen closer to home and india is not perfect india's uh, discrimination is multi layered uh, religious discrimination is there we we also have a i mean wide spread of ethnic differences across states languages are different and being part of the sporting ecosystem we have come across we have seen various instances of discrimination against athletes be it from be it, be it uh, sports persons coming from the northeast be it south indians uh, taking part in i can i can say that from my experience being a wrestler a north dominated sport coming from kerala so how they look down on south indian wrestlers it, it's it's just a small instance but i i look the part i am i am brown screened i i can pass off as a as a north indian but it's not the same for very visibly different uh, sports persons i'm talking about northeast uh, at least having said that we the our northeast at least are the ones in in many sport they dominate the sport but still they don't have that kind of a respect outside of that playing 90 for instance if you take football we have a lot of footballers who are the driving force we are in the indian football team now but their relevance remain in that 90 uh, minutes of play and in that 90 yards or so of of the playing field beyond that so these are uh, underlying issues that is happening in indian sport and beyond the sporting circle uh, mm-hmm. there are a lot of social injustices uh, political injustices happening uh, related not just to the covid-19 pandemic now the suffering has been as as climbed up to epic proportions people are dying on the road uh, but before that say for instance political targeting of the students that happened uh, end of last year the delhi pro- program that happened the violence that happened so we have sports persons uh, for instance someone like virat kohli or someone like virendra sehwag who have tremendous reach among the masses who have the who have that cloud to sway uh, not just people's minds but also sway even policy makers that way even even people in power because that's the kind of cloud that sport like cricket has in india we consider themselves them as demi gods right but they they remain silent they they are completely they live in their own bubble of sorts and they are completely happy with being around their own vested interests pushing messages for their own vested interests like for instance if it's uh, for instance business interest or endorsements or even social messages which are safe so that that's that's the story in india and uh, yeah no so so for example like like you very rightly brought up uh, because we are talking here in a sense also about not just uh, not just the institutional or systemic racism uh, that we see in america and how those elements play out in in the indian context but we are also talking about specifically police brutality and the role of uh, the role of this uniform <coughs> sort of uh, agents of the state <clears throat> and and state uh, sort of state sponsored in that sense oppression uh, you know and, and directly so so it, both in the context of jawaharlal nehru university as well as uh, jamia milia islamia we found that uh, there were clear sort of violations in terms of i mean in uh, however many years since our existence as an independent country how many instances can you, or instances can you remember of the police 
marching into a university campus uh, with uh, you know weapons of whatever sort tear gas lathis all of that and openly attacking students and an evidence of which was caught on uh, cctv camera etc etc and these cases are also in court at the highest level in the country and 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 we also find that un- so this pandemic and uh, the kind of uh, shroud that is it's kind of put over all of us has then allowed these forces to continue their work because so much of the media attention the world's attention is all on on this virus and how it's spreading and impacting various sections of society so while on the one hand uh, you're saying that the entire country is uniting against or uniting in an effort to mitigate the effects of this virus on the other hand uh, student activists students uh, intellectuals professors etc etc are being rounded up uh, being sent to jail due processes are not being followed or or ways are being found around those due processes simply because everyone is being told to stay home so so uh, extremely complex challenges and just just a few in fact just a few weeks or months uh, previously we found a spate of such uh, of course not with the level of brutality and and one i suppose distinction is that the level of militarization of the police in india except uh, in in the state of kashmir is far less, less than what you see you know for uh, urban police forces in high density high population areas living in the united states i mean they they have all, almost you know high caliber weapons and tanks all rifles almost. and all those things yeah it's uh, and and that kind of military hard hardware facing a bunch of la- well uh, people armed or or uh, equipped with sticks and stones so so there is there are all of these uh, things that are also happening and so this whole thing of targeting people in india or communities in india that appear like chinese for example yeah right was a regular thing where uh, they, they were racist or racial slurs were used for them people were physically attacked you know and this all over the country <coughs> whether it's uh, in, in cities like bangalore or delhi or bombay uh, in fact one of the few athletes who spoke out against uh, this was sunil chetri who is the captain of the indian football team uh, who was talking about you know, people from the north east and literally i mean here's one more similarity sorry i'm going on and on but uh black people in america are saying don't kill us you know wa- like walking on the street going to do whatever it is that i'm doing isn't uh, shouldn't be a reason for for me to get killed and it's it's uh, it's quite similar in that sense here where the, the the reaction over there to it is yeah don't get killed show sure, but look at where all the crime happens uh, look at look at you know who who are the perpetrators of all this all, all all the crime of course you will be pulled up at at a at a routine traffic stop pulled out of your car shoved onto the street and manhandled cuffed etc etc you know so many in fact so many uh, multiple white women have come out with accounts of how their partners who they were driving with in a car at various times in their lives have been treated at these uh, these traffic stops versus how those women in the same situation were treated themselves you know so they, it's something very similar to what's happening in india where at a basic level uh, people from the north east or people who who are, who belong to a certain ethnicity are repeatedly asked to prove how they are even indian so uh, going back to sidan something sidan said about virus being a shroud or a shield for these activities to happen on the side and uh, we are not getting enough attention or people are not understanding what is happening on the on the side but we can't justify our political and social inertness 
as a society i mean uh, because sports persons also is part of that society and it reflects what uh, how we are so when when all these issues were happening in the jnu or uh, when the violence was happening in delhi and all that uh, people who live next to the jnu also they they, they if they don't uh, if, if it doesn't affect their lives they don't care so if it's not their son who is getting lathi charged by the police inside the campus and it doesn't matter for them so so and i've heard i have heard it from people i i live right next to the jnu and i've heard it from people from the uh, from the neighborhood they say about how these students are always unhappy and creating problems and all that without realizing what is the issue that is happening why they are standing up and why it's important for 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 education to to be free and Uh, why? Why the society should needs free thinkers? Because this is an attack attack on democracy. Why are killing education and free thinking and uh, the capability of standing up and understanding the rights? So that is the basic thing that they are targeting, which which to a large extent is is not there in the US. That's why uh, uh, this is. I mean, people are rightfully called. In, in fact, uh, in news clips uh, last day, we had a video also running. Uh, uh, it's it's not it's not a riot. It's a re- revolution that is happening. That's what that's what people in the US are saying. People who are involved. Actually, in what you're saying, Leslie, is like also very appropriate, just in terms of purely in terms of like the kind of posts that certain athletes are doing, where they are not just asking people to speak up, but also asking them to understand their privilege when they are speaking up. It's like they're it's asking, a, why it's not athlete. a privilege? It's it's a right. It's a it's a, it's no, not no, a privilege. No, no, no. Like yeah, yeah African American athletes right. are telling their white counterparts to educate themselves and speak up, not because they just need to speak up, but also understand the situation that they live in because of just the color of their skin is so different from someone else's, and uh, very often even in India, like we don't understand that. just the concept of how privileged certain people are and how they're treated differently by law enforcement agencies just because of the way they look it's i mean i have like a very simple experience of this when i was in uh, this was just a brief bit where i was working on a short film in hyderabad and there's this festival called batukuma that happens Okay, Batukuma is actually a rural festival. It's been appropriated by the government of Telangana, and now it's like the Mardi Gras of uh, the state. So there was a friend of mine uh, who is uh, he, he's 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 a Shadil Khan student who's studying at Usmania University, a PhD student, and he wanted to go. And his PhD thesis, he was exploring the idea of doing this exp- this appropriation of a rural festival into the urban consciousness, and he wanted to go and. just shoot some pictures at batukuma but he wanted to take me because he said if i take you then i'll probably get to breeze through and go through right till the chief minister i was like what do you mean like why why would you assume that he's like just because of the way you walk and the way you talk like if the policeman stops you you're going to be like ek minute why why where is if he stops me i just turn around and walk away <laughs> and it really really like it opens your head a little bit about just this idea of privilege which is i think something that is being questioned now in different ways in the us so, uh, and i hope that athletes in india also recognize that no but, uh, in the us also thing. yeah it's it's not the color of the skin that matters there because uh, yesterday uh, michael jordan spoke, spoke up and jordan is the greatest of all time uh jordan's show is doing amazing numbers on netflix at the moment but he was one person who never stood up when he had that 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 kind of a platform when he was on uh, at his peak while playing basketball he never not even a single issue social issue political issue nothing zero so and here he comes out suddenly so uh, first thing you when when you see that is you question his motive maybe it's to promote his show i don't know what why why is he aware now right now suddenly or maybe maybe sitting at home and he is, is suddenly is, is is conscience as how he can or whatever but but uh, so so and he is he is a black athlete uh, who represented that that race at the is level is a olympic med- gold medalist five times six times 
NBA champion, considered one of the greatest, or if not the greatest possible player in the world. But he never used his platform at all. And you, I mean, I would never do that, but there are many people who have compared him to Muhammad Ali. And, and Muhammad Ali represents that athlete who lost his best years because he stood up for something that he believed in. Uh, he, he, uh, he, he probably would have been, I mean, there's no question about his greatness in the boxing ring, but he lost his, his best years because he, he, he never wanted to be drafted. He was against the war. So, when athletes speak up, athletes like uh, Naomi Osaka or the young athlete Goff, they have a lot to lose as well because we remember. Uh, I mean, we, we remember Colin Kaepernick kneeling. He started off the kneeling down protest when when national anthems were happening in in the NFL, and uh, San Francisco's 49ers, 49ers were his club, and they next season they removed him, and after that he has not gotten a contract in the NFL, and. Ironically, yesterday, the owner of uh, 49ers, he came out saying that he is uh, donating so much of uh, dollars uh, in, in the fight against systemic racism. Uh, Twitter obviously went after him. He said, we don't need your money. So, so that's... So, I, that's, so that's there, the there, there are, I mean, I, uh, I don't know if this is a disagreement or what, but like... Uh, I, again, none of us know Michael Jordan and can can't really uh, speak too much about his personal no, motivations. But we we understand. But, but we understand the system, right? It's a, it's a it's the sporting system, the business of sport that's governing a lot of things. It's not no, it's fair, not race. It's not fair enough. Fair enough. But like for what what uh, it's my understanding of it is two things. One is, of course, speaking out about issues that affect you and your community uh, if you are a leader in that community is important but how you do that can come in multiple ways and I don't think that uh, in, in my opinion that point calling out uh, black athletes no matter what their greatness or their influence uh, may or may not have been in this context is very different from what Vero was talking about earlier about those of us who don't belong to minority communities and the privileges that we enjoy and what and the impact that it has when uh, non-minorities or majorities or in this case white people, yeah. white athletes come out and, and take a stand and show solidarity, you know. Uh, one thing that has come out over the past and, you know, when Michael Jordan started playing basketball or became a professional, uh, it has to be said that things were very different in the US then uh, than they are today. You know, so economic emancipation, right? Creating this now, Michael Jordan is a, a millionaire several hundred times over. Probably, he has yeah. the Jordan brand uh, is one of the biggest sportswear brands. He made in the world. a he made a ten ten episode advert on net. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so 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 no, you you like what what he does, what he yeah, does. Yeah. Do, that, that, no, that's I, that's one part. But what mm -hmm. what the impact of that may or may not have done to empower his community, uh, we cannot effectively comment on from from where we are sitting. Probably, yeah, yeah. right. And the the fact that like Jordan did manage to create this very large uh, financial empire for himself. Is a model that then uh, some black athletes have continued to follow. You know, you you look at the guys who are uh, at the top of and, and the NBA in many ways because it's so driven and so largely sort of manned uh, by minority community athletes. Uh, increasingly now imports from countries other than the U.S. and a very large chunk of of uh, African Americans. So, you know, uh, they've cre all of them now are investing the millions of dollars that they get in salaries in creating uh, wider systems and networks that allow more people from, uh, from various communities to uh, take these stands, to, to, do several, uh, to just have the economic freedom to even think about things beyond what impacts you personally. 
right? So, so that is, uh, I mean, uh, it may be a small distinction. And why, that's why it's so much more striking when you look at the Indian context and, and you because, examine, yeah. examine where some of uh, our greatest athletes come from. Our most popular athletes, our most financially independent athletes, they happen to all be cricketers, which is, you know, again, uh, we should, we can talk at length about the systemic racism or uh, institutional sort of biases that pervade the cricket system as well. And how yeah, yeah, va- various uh, people are treated in that system based on where they come from, how they speak. You know, um, if you have a middle class upbringing like a Sachin Tendulkar, you are kind of and uh, left alone to uh, work on your sport and uh, do all of that. But you also elevated to this status of, like Leslie was saying, uh, dem- uh, demigod. You know, uh, rise. Rise of Tendulkar had another factor playing in it also, which is uh, deeply rooted in 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 how. Uh, Cricket is controlled by by upper caste. Yeah, so, I mean, you, yeah, yeah, you don't have to go very much no, I mean, further I think this is than, true than to compare the two uh, uh, and Kamli, Vinod Kamli and, and Sachin Tendulkar who yeah, came up, uh, grew up through through this, in yeah. the same system. Many people argued at that time when these guys were youngsters, these guys were teenagers, that Kamli was the more talented, the more explosive, the more yeah, uh, yeah. so many charismatic of the two. And undoubtedly, at least in terms of personal charisma or personality, Kamli was. He was much more outspoken, yeah. you know, he was much more flashy in terms of his style. Uh, and he said things. He, he took a... Whether you agree with his stand or not is a secondary matter, but at least he said things. Yeah. And, and, and uh, you, uh, people blame him for, for his downfall, but I would say cricket system failed him. So, I mean, at a, at a, at a deeper level. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, the, the, after that 1996 World Cup uh, situation, even the fans turned against him. Yeah, yeah. and like, it was not his fault. That, and of course uh, not. We, but, but one guy, uh, probably and unsurprisingly the darkest skinned guy on the team, <laughs> takes the yeah. entire blame for w- what is uh, a, a team sort of collapse, like the team failure, 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 whatever. Yeah. You know? And at that point, how many of his brethren, his compatriots, his uh, whatever, his friends in the dressing room stood up for uh, for him? And I mean, they kind of. I mean, we're talking about Kambli, but I was growing up in a small town in Jharkhand, and I remember at that point of time, whenever India played Pakistan, the immediate question used to be, "Aaj Azhar kaise khelega?" Like, which yeah. is, I mean, like. Oof. It's. I'm sorry, but it's. <laughs> yeah, I, no. I, I can't. So, so it's. Uh, yeah, fair enough, man. And it's undou- undoubtedly like. Uh, you know, you have these conversations, especially like Leslie was saying in, in North India, right? Yeah. Where, absolutely. where, uh, like, uh, just, just the pervasiveness of this casual racism is so absolutely. absolutely. Like a, a Punjabi guy was. Literally saying this the other day, Are, hamare liye to, pura, everyone south of uh, Bombay is a madrasi. Bombay is a madrasi, you know? yeah. And uh, uh, like, if you are a marwadi or a bani, we don't have any difference between them. We don't have any respect between them. You know, so, uh, so this is, and the, then, the, this goes into then, like, if you are, happen to look like, uh, or belong to a different ethnicity altogether, then to there is no. St- then it's it's there, magnified. Yeah. I mean, the, then to you straight up the racist uh, slurs come out, the epithets come out, and uh, like you, you look at, and yet we sit and we deny the existence of racism in our society. Quite simply, no, we are we are a bunch so, of racists. <laughs> we are a racist country, and we don't realize it because we have we have the mask of brown skin so we we how can we be racist because we are already black I mean, or yeah, brown, brown skin yeah, and that, the that. same and a shared colonial past so it's so like, whenever we are accused sexual. of being racist ourselves we, we are like no but how can we be racist hum to, hum, I know. 
uh, white white man has ruled us you know white we yes, need yes. to get whitey off our back as well and and all of these things uh, and uh, like i mean simple actual facts like how uh, now in the sport of football we there's a long history of uh, people especially from nigeria several players being imported or, or coming in to play for our football clubs right over the years and and many of them have been the most like sort of the crowds love them they score the most amount of goals i mean we were just talking yesterday about the 1996 97 jct mills uh, football team which won the first edition yep. of the national football league and uh, stephen who was the uh, uh, who is a Nigerian former footballer now and uh, it, it was one of the rare seasons when an indian striker finished on top of the scoring charts uh, byton got 14 goals that season but steven was an amazing player and and like his role in that team was central to uh, how they managed to uh, you know be the dominant side for that season winning pretty much everything uh, but also, from the crowd okay. yeah. the kind of reception response that uh, that african player that player black players get yeah i mean it's nothing short of uh, i mean also in just the way like i mean whenever you talk to uh, again like i don't want to i don't want to shame anyone but just when you talk to coaches or scouts or managers the way they talk about like players from different ethnicities and the way they play it's just like it's like ha ye wahan ye wahan se aaya hai to aise khelta hai he is from here so he will play like this they are strong in build and acha he is from here to acha in log they are very calm demeanor ke hote hain ye log you know like uh, it, this is racism i mean there is no other way to describe this So and uh, such stereotyping is what is happening when when these police uh, pull out and they are using they are using tasers and all now, na. I I I was seeing some Stand videos here. in the morning. Stand so stun guns and they are just sitting in the car. You stop and two kids, twenty year olds, they were coming from a protest and they stop them, ask them questions. They don't want to talk to the police because they know what is coming next. they chase him down and then within the car itself they just uh, i mean so that's that's not done that's not how, how, how it's, so why is it happening because you have a profile in your mind and you and and the skin is black so i mean straight straight easy target so uh, and in our context it's it's just Uh, the problem is magnified because a the level of poverty that we have here is far more absolute than uh, what the united states is facing the level of uh, institutional systemic uh, oppression has where where they have had it for 400 years uh, we have had it for thousands ever since Whatever. Uh, ever since yeah. this whole structure of caste came came into existence you know so it's it's in our in many ways it's in our dna and so the fight is that much harder but also the consequences are that much harder and yet we find that people like us who are have gone through the best in terms of what the education system of this country can offer uh in terms of jobs in terms of uh, just how we live our lives we find it hard to educate ourselves to be more sensitive to be more aware to to and to take a stand when it comes down to taking a stand because if you don't stand for anything at the end of the day how many cars you have parked in your driveway isn't going to mean anything that's that's the point when you mentioned earlier about economic ind- independence of black athletes and how they are using it so in our country there's no culture as such about uh giving it back to the society except if it's a campaign that that gives you some some kind of pr brownie points that's how that's how bad it is over here so uh, be it middle class uh, normal professionals living in delhi not acknowledging things that are happening not doing doing their bit or not standing up or be it the our elite athletes our our sporting heroes someone like someone like the multimillionaire 
Virat Kohli or MS Dhoni. It's it's the same. It's 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 some kind of uh, I don't know cultural backwardness or whatever societal backwardness or whatever because we are all selfish and live in our silos in our locked up societies. Uh, <laughs> uh i don't know what i don't know how india has come about to such a situation i just i mean it's it's i'm again like i, I mean i'm not going to fully uh, agree with like what you're saying about like athletes not giving back to society because there are athletes like i mean of course uh, dilip, there are. dilip tirki for example like a man who's been capped for india more than anyone else in hockey he's gone and he's done something for the area that he comes from and what methods he's done it in different ways he's had to get into the system to be able to deliver back to his community uh, so there are and there, there's a uh, there were, maybe you can elaborate on this but there's a really uh, interesting sort of comparative there because they are both member uh, the, uh, dilip is also a member of parliament as is uh, sachin right sachin. so yeah so, yeah absolutely i mean uh, the i think again this is uh again i, I don't want to generalize after having said that i won't generalize but i think it is got um, something to do with like how how w- what kind of community you come from and how connected you are to it like when you're growing up i guess as a middle class kid in bombay uh, you're giving back to the community is just in terms of like hey let's make a cricket academy or something like that whereas for someone like dilip tirki it's not just about that he understands like the struggles that he grew up facing so when he's giving back to the community it's not just via the medium of sport ki mere ko aur hockey player khade karne hain india ke liye it's also ki he understands what this hockey just playing hockey just the facility can represent can just the ambition this can show to any kid in sundargarh growing up it's it's also it's also like, just that is I mean, perhaps the difference yeah. the generalization uh, that is uh, perhaps a difference but uh, also the, such a generalization is impossible because when we take into account another member of parliament uh, mary com who is from from the northeast i knew that i knew it <laughs> no so it's it's i mean how opaque yeah, and you're uh, right you're insens- right insens- yeah insensitive she I has become and she has come up the hard way no no question or no taking away the hardships that he has suffered uh, coming up but uh, what she is doing about a lot of open things that are happening in the northeast uh, it's i mean we all know so so it's so, not about yeah, middle so, class upbringing so again again let's like uh, i mean uh, we do often uh, call people out and take specific examples and and names and stuff like that uh, having been to uh, mericoms boxing academy in uh, imphal for example like these the the contradictions in her personality and because she is a public figure i guess we we often discuss public figures and and their roles in society and she is a parliamentarian so even more so a parliamentarian representing a region of this country that has been Uh, again ignored whether it's in terms of economically yeah. Uh, yeah and because of the fact that ours is a system of uh, representational democracy and where see the number of seats in parliament you get is based on what how populous your state is Let's, therefore yeah, if you if you come from manipur where you only have a few lakh people mm-hmm. you have very few members of parliament and therefore the stories from the north east don't get told to the country at the highest level decision making body right so the contradictions in terms of mericom support for the bharatiya janata party uh, and the stand that she has taken uh, in the context of this ruling party is essentially what seems to be a lust or a thirst or a or a desire to keep these guys on on her team so that she continues to get the support that she gets from from the state now if you look at the sponsors that her boxing academy have for example many of them are either public sector or directly the government itself right and now what 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 it's having though an impact on is that uh several kids you know 
I, I don't know the exact number of uh, kids that live and train at this academy, but there is no doubt that that in that small ecosystem, the lives, like we were saying, of these few kids who do get access to it are completely transformed. You know. Yeah. Uh, we met some new uh, recruits there who had just about joined, and for them, this, this was kind of an annual day celebration that they have and uh, we met some new kids and we saw how kind of what their uh, aid, how they were dressed, how they spoke, the kind of confidence or whatever they demonstrated and versus kids who had been there for some time, some of them had gone on to compete at the national level, etc, etc, both boys and girls uh, and how, how sort of their whole vibe, you know. So, the, so you could tell that it's it's transformational work that is happening in in places like, like this, you know. So these I, look two, also like I have these to, contradictions are I very hard say, like, to kind of uh, figure out yeah. also and wrap our heads also, around. Also, like it's so, also like it's also an understanding of like how deep do you want to get your hands dirty? Like it's just something as simple as that. Like while I'm saying all like I'm I I, I have a huge amount of respect for Dilip Turkey, and I mean. When I, whenever I'm around him, I can't say anything. Like Leslie can tell you this, uh, but the truth is, he got his hands dirty. Like he went in, he uh, got into the BJD, he's fought elections, he's like tried to influence policy from that level. He's become influential to a level where Hockey India has now like realized that hey, you know what? We've also got the support of the Odisha government, so let's do something in Sundargarh. All these things, like it's you have to get in, get your hands dirty, and do that. Another truth that seems to emerge out of this uh, is that the load, the entire burden of this um, yeah. awakening or uh, this Absolutely. fight, goes back onto the same people that are the most affected <laughs> by it. Absolutely, know? yes. Which, which is kind of like, like immediately, it, like yeah. So, you can see where you have to go from the Philippine Turkey, you I mean, one of the most yeah, yeah. recognizable football players again in this country. Not that there are very many, yeah. but Mehraj is distinctive, man. He's got now that flowing beard that he's got. He, he's at an ISL club, so his picture and, and, and everything is all over the place. Uh, he's a accomplished uh, or, well, he's getting to becoming an accomplished coach. And yet, when he was going to see his ailing mother in Srinagar a few days ago, the police picked him up and locked him up. Without yeah. any conversation, without asking any questions, of course. Now, because Mehraj within uh, the sphere of things is an influential person, so this mistake was corrected, right? And and the local DCP or whoever it was then issued him a pass and allowed him to go and see his mother. But this is a person who has a voice because he's an athlete and 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 and, and a recognized athlete. Yeah, that's the. That's the point, na? Athletes' voice. That's that's why athletes' voices are important because uh, it it reaches a larger audience. It leads, uh, I mean, it 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 has it has a global impact when an athlete stands up or kneels down. In. So again, like I mean, so I'm sorry. I don't want to digress or like I want to bring this back to just the fact that we expect people from minority communities and do whatever development work that needs to be done. Right, like we expect Dilip Turki to go back and do that in Sindhargarh. We expect Mary Kohn to do this. We expect Mehraj to do this in Kashmir. Uh, but unless they don't or they don't take the initiative, the system doesn't seem to care. Like, I mean, I've, I've, I can find this truth for Jharkhand, where we had a great hockey player. Unfortunately, if, when he was playing, there was no Indian system, there was no clear-cut infrastructure providing mechanism. And so Jharkhand hockey has languished behind for years and years and years. And till some player from one of the, from Khunti goes back and says, you know what, like, 
मैं शुरू करती हूँ बिकॉज देर आर नो मेल हॉकी प्लेयर्स एनी मोर फ्रॉम कुंटी टिल देन लाइक हॉकी इंडिया इज नॉट बी इंटरेस्टेड देर इज नो सेंटर देर लाइक वट वट वी टॉकिंग अबाउट देर इज नो अदर एथलीट हुज गोन गो देर एंड डू एनी थिंग बिकॉज वी एक्सपेक्ट वी पुट दी ओनर्स द बर्डन ऑफ डिवेलपमेंट ऑन द पीपल हु आर बींग मोस्ट इफेक्टेड बाय अ लैक ऑफ डिवेलपमेंट इट सेल्फ which is essentially i find to be the conversation happening internationally also right now yeah so it's uh, exactly but uh, again expectation is not for for people from the minority go back expectation from our if you ask me the expectation that i have being a sports journalist and before that being a sports fan is is for our the people the our sports persons or people people with privilege to use I mean, ex exert things in their sphere of influence. It can be just one, one small locality that, the, the, mm -hmm. because that's what happening in in my home state Kerala. So the sports clubs over there, uh, local sports clubs are were forefront in uh, during the floods or during this pandemic in in exerting their sphere of influence, their youth, uh, bank of youth. to to do relief work to do, help out uh, the society in whatever way is possible so that, that's how that's how a society grows that's how it works so that's 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 the least expectation that i have and of course our stars have bigger sphere of influence so it's it's up to them to how to make use of that all right thanks very much guys for for all your inputs of course this is a it's a complex conversation it's a it's a it's a conversation that engages communities and should be engaging communities across the world at a time when we are debating some of especially when we are debating some of the structures the economic political structures that have led us to this point you know so so we we'll keep this conversation going in different contexts of course uh, it's a developing story things are happening in the us as well things are happening in india as well so we will we'll update you more on that but for now uh, that does it for us thank you for watching news click uh, follow us at uh, news click sports it's our new instagram handle which has all all the updates on the stuff that we're getting up to and and also a way for us to engage with our audience uh, thank you for watching goodbye Thank <laughs> you.